Without a doubt, technology plays a role in the lives of high schoolers. Many teenagers have access to a computer at home and spend a great deal of time surfing the Internet and chatting with friends in chat rooms. As a teacher, you have a unique opportunity to capitalize on these habits and use them to enhance your students' education. You may already be aware of some of the main types of technology you'll come in contact with at school – software, hardware, and the Internet. We're going to look at examples of each of these types of technology and ways in which they can be used in a high school math class. Let's start with software. You'll find many uses for general office applications like those from the Microsoft Office system. For example, you could use a word processor application to create a syllabus outlining course requirements and classroom behavior expectations. You could also design a scoring rubric detailing how answers to extended responses would be graded. Software applications can be combined to add interest to a lesson. For instance, students could use a presentation program to create a slideshow, such as one summarizing a unit about metric conversions. The slideshow might contain slides with both text and clip art illustrating various measurements. Also, within the slideshow, they could include a spreadsheet comparing American units of measurement to European metric conversions. In some instances, CD-ROM versions of textbooks are available for students to use. This is especially convenient for student athletes who want to stay on top of their lessons but may not want to carry or read their textbook on the bus to and from events. The CDs also include ideas for math-based research projects that may not be outlined in the textbook. Students might also use the additional worksheets on the disk when they need extra help on challenging topics. Let's take a moment to stop and review the software we've explored so far. Answer this question and then click Next to move on in the lesson. High school students often ask, when am I ever going to use this stuff? One type of software game that may help answer this question is Career Math Word Problems. It contains over 350 math word problems about people and their occupations, providing an excellent lesson for introducing the mathematical skills needed for various careers. Another example is Hot Dog Stand, The Works, which uses multimedia simulations to challenge students to operate, manage, and market their own concession stand. In addition to the personal computer, which is used to run software applications, another type of hardware that is valuable in the classroom is a digital projector. One idea would be to have the students create a bar graph illustrating the total number of points scored in each game by their school football, baseball, or basketball teams during the season. Another idea would be to create a pie chart of the win-loss record of each team. Using an overhead projector, you can have students use wet erase markers and overhead transparencies to create a pie chart illustrating the percentages of various musical artists they listen to. They can enter the same data into a spreadsheet and then transform it into a pie chart. Using a digital projector, students would be able to see how accurate their pie chart was to the computer-generated one. Scientific calculators, especially graphing calculators, enable students to focus less on routine arithmetic and concentrate more on learning how and when to use equations. Calculators give you an opportunity to present your students with more challenging problems which will build valuable critical thinking skills. Another great way to use technology is to show DVDs or videos of documentaries or movies related to your subject matter. For example, you might show a documentary that highlights the design and building of Egyptian pyramids when discussing various three-dimensional geometric shapes and the use of volume equations. Videos that showcase the structures of ancient Greece would also provide visual reinforcement on a unit about distinguishing between geometric shapes. Cameras are also great tools for the classroom. For example, if you're studying slope, you can have students use a digital camera to take pictures of buildings that represent varying degrees of steepness. Perhaps there are school buildings on your campus that would illustrate interesting angles. Once again, let's stop to think about what we've covered. Take a moment to think about other ways to use a digital camera in class, and then list them in the space provided. When you have finished, click Next.
Now let's move on to the Internet. There are so many resources available on the Internet that it's impossible to name them all. But here are a few tools you'll definitely want to explore. For example, you may have a great curriculum, but there might be times when you want to customize a lesson. Although there are many lesson plan sites available, LessonPlansPage.com has over 2,500 lesson plans from pre-K through high school. The math link includes ideas for algebra, geometry, graphing, and probability. This site has the added bonus of a collection of pre-made worksheets available to print. On another website, Bringle.com, you can find weekly brain teasers to challenge your students' computational strategies. In addition, students can use search engines to gather information on research topics, such as Euclidean plane geometry, the Fibonacci sequences, the golden ratio, or the Pythagorean theorem. Yahoo offers a search directory devoted specifically to math and science topics. You can also use websites such as MapQuest or Yahoo Maps to create and print maps. For instance, you can locate a map of Florida's highways to insert into a word processor document and create an exercise using the concept of scale factors. You might also want to visit GoogleEarth.com to locate and include a satellite image of Florida to complement this exercise. It's time for our last review. This time, try to think of other ways you might use the Internet in your classes. Click Next to move on when you have finished. Another way to obtain information on the Internet is in a chat room. For example, Teachers.net would be an especially valuable resource for communicating with teachers from around the world. This site has a link called MailRing that includes a network of over 50,000 of the world's brightest educators. It is designed to encourage peer support and professional development. Students can use chat rooms, too. They can use sites to locate chat partners from around the world or across the nation. Some sites provide online tutoring and message boards for students in upper-level math areas such as Algebra 2, Trigonometry, and Calculus. Like chat rooms, discussion boards are great for exchanging ideas with other teachers. Also, students can use discussion boards to share their thoughts and gain other students' perspectives on challenging problems. One such site, AlgebraOnline.com, offers both chat rooms and discussion boards for students. Another great tool on the Internet is a paper submission site, such as Turnitin.com, which allows students to upload their papers to a website. The advantage of a site like this is that it offers free plagiarism searches, peer review tools, and grading and marking tools. This allows for teacher feedback and student response at any time, not just in a teacher-student conference. While we've given a few examples of technology in the classroom, there are really endless possibilities. Take some time to think of how technology could be applied to lessons in your classroom to enhance your teaching and your students' learning. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in the classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.